Well, we finally made it to part two. There were some successes and also some failures, but why don't you join me and I'll show you what happened. I really like the lines of the Wyoming woody teardrop, so I made a transparency of the shape and threw it up on a wall. There's a link in the description if you're interested. I'm only using the shape, but the link provides a complete set of plans. The butcher paper here is 4 feet wide and 10 feet long to make a full-size template. I also made some small marks on the bottom of the sheet, marking out an 8 foot length to mark the bed of the trailer. I tried to stick to the lines, but wasn't too meticulous as I was planning to smooth out the curves when making the templates. The paper was then attached to some hardboard with spray adhesive. I was most concerned with getting the outer curve shaped well, so I cut it on the bandsaw and then worked it out on the edge sander. Once the outer edge was finalized, I set up a 2 inch jig to cut the inner curve. Then back to the bandsaw. and the sander. The insulation is one inch thick, and since I was going to be using plywood for the framing, I needed to glue two full sheets of plywood together. I didn't want to skimp on the glue, so I used about a half a gallon and then spread it around with a roller. I don't have any clamps that would successfully hold the material together, but I can use a very old clamping technique, screw it down. I gave it overnight for the glue to cure, and then I traced out my templates onto the board. In order to more easily handle the material, I broke it down with the circular saw and jigsaw to rough shape, and then the band saw got me closer to the lines. As I mentioned, I wanted one inch thick frames, but two pieces of three quarter inch plywood is one and seven sixteenths of an inch. The easiest and quickest way I could think of to get the plywood on a diet was sending it through the planer. Once it was to the right thickness, I attached the template with a few brad nails and ran it against a flush trim bit to copy the template. Afterwards, pop the template off and apply it to another piece. I needed two of every template I made. I could then move to putting the frame together. I chose to go with pocket hole joinery. Another option, and probably a better one, would have been to extend the framing pieces a little bit more and then join them with a half lap reinforced with some screws. Once I finished it up, I laid it against the 8 foot lower frame piece and said, oops. Before I had a chance to address it, this happened. So the problem that I had with this piece of plywood is that it started to delaminate from one another. 
And I also noticed I was starting to get some of that in the back as well. Now I don't have time right now to figure out a way to make this all work because I've got an appointment down with Greg Porter at Greg's Garage KC because he's going to help me move the axle on my trailer. So I need to head down there, but I'll get back to this later. I'm going to start off by saying Greg was awesome. He was very methodical in his process. I'm just thrilled having met him and grateful for the help. The first step was removing the fenders, which were quite stubborn. There was then easy access to the mounting points for the spring and axle. The axle was rolled out of the way, and then Greg marked out the location of the new mounts in the front of the trailer and the bolt holes in the back. After the stubbornness of the fenders, we took a trip to the metal store and bought some half-inch thick stock to make some new mounting plates. They were cut to size and a mount hole drilled into them. Then it was the part I was waiting for, seeing a welder in action. Greg welded, knocked off the slag, welded some more, and repeated the process, getting both the outer and inner plate secured to the trailer. In order to keep the bolt holes lined up, he inserted them into both mounting plates and clamped them to the frames before welding it. At this point, the project really is complete. There was just some finishing work that needed to be done. We reattached the axle and spring, and then Greg was able to position the fenders to weld them back in place, and the trailer was ready to go. Okay, so let's recap. We had some good progress in moving the axle back nine inches to help with balancing the load while it's moving, but we had a critical failure when it came to the structural integrity of the teardrop trailer. I think the overall idea of using a laminate material will work because it has a lot of strength to it. I just picked the wrong material. The CDX plywood was cheaper, that's why I bought it, but now that I'm thinking about it in hindsight, it probably wasn't the best choice, probably a Baltic birch, because CDX plywood does have some voids in it. And despite the setback, I'm not gonna let it stop me from continuing to build the teardrop trailer. I just need to take a step back and give it some thought on how it is that I want to proceed. I'm still thinking that the best bet is building the framing first. A big shout out and thank you to Greg over at Greg's Garage for his help in moving the axle. He's definitely a lifesaver in doing that for me. I usually do forget to mention this, but please check me out on social media. I'm most active on Instagram, where I post pictures and videos of what I'm currently working on. And also, don't forget to check out my website, where I have all of my current and also former projects that are able to be viewed. Thanks for joining me on the second part of the Teardrop trailer build. And if you have any ideas on how to do the framing, please put them down in the comments below. And also, like and share this video. It does help me out a lot. Thanks for watching. As always, may God bless you.